Hello and welcome to our new episode of Animal Magnetism, the show from Multnomah County Animal Services where good times and good information come together. I'm your host, Kat Barkley, and I'm so glad to have you with us tonight. We've got so much information to share, and we can't wait to get started. In our evening newscast, one of our top stories is about the new and exciting advertising campaign for our neighborhood cat adoption centers. Our other main story is about an adorable kitten, Charlie Bucket, who made it through a harrowing ordeal before finding his forever home. We'll also share some fun and adorable photos from our Pitties in Pink group, strutting their stuff on National Pitbull Awareness Day. And make sure you stick around because we have a brand new episode of the ever popular Pet Connection Game Show. Who will our special shelter pet pick as her perfect match? Wait and see. We have all this and more coming up on tonight's episode of Animal Magnetism. Coming to you from Multnomah County, the pet capital of the universe, it is Pet Connection. And introducing our star and hostess of our show, it's Jean Fleming. Thank you, thank you. Hello and welcome to Pet Connection, brought to you by Multnomah County Animal Services. I am your host, Jean Fleming. Say, what, in, what do you think of my shirt? It says pitties in pink. Pretty cool, huh? An important part of what we do at MCAS is work hard to replace myths and rumors with facts. The Pitties in Pink program was developed just for that purpose, to get the truth out about pit bull type breeds. You can learn more about Pitties in Pink, other educational programs, and more by visiting our website. Okay, on with the show. Here's how it works. Our pet will be asking questions of three hopeful adopters. How those hopefuls answer will help our pet choose one of those three. Now let's meet the three people who will be vying for our pet's heart. Our first hopeful adopter is a 14 year old with an IQ that's off the charts. He's won the World Junior Chess Championship twice and he's written a symphony. He's also written a just-released children's book titled Physics Equals Fun. His name is Radcliffe Potter. Hey, may we call you Cliff? Yes, ma'am. Please do call me Cliff. Our second hopeful adopter is one busy lady. Not only is she mom to four-year-old triplets, but she's a gifted guitar bass guitarist as well who plays on many studio recordings. For fun, She's an amateur drag racer who's earned the nickname Pedal, as in Pedal to the Metal. Here she is, Candy Kane. Call me Pedal, Jean. Okay, Pedal it is. Our next hopeful is Hyacinth Goodrich, known to everyone as Granny Goodrich. Granny is 95 years old and proud of it. You name it. War, revolution, hurricanes, earthquakes, fire, floods, pestilence, and five husbands. She has outlived it all. Welcome, Granny! Gee, everyone else calls me Granny. You can call me Gigi. Would you like a cookie, dear? Okay, Gigi, I'll take one of those cookies after the show. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you about our special pet, who just happens to be a pit bull type breed. A newcomer to our shelter, this girl has got the energy of the three-year-old that she is. She's a quick learner and eager to please, and we'll ask that she and her new guardian take obedience classes together. A classic beauty, we've given her the name Emma. Now to keep Emma from hearing the introductions, she's been backstage, isolated in a soundproof kennel. Okay, let's meet Emma. Welcome up, Emma, come on. Yes, oh, it is so good to meet you and have you out here and we're excited for you too. Now I know you have all your questions prepared, so anytime you're ready, 
you go ahead and ask. Well, thank you, Jean. My first question is the same for each of you. I'll start with you, number three. Do you know about those of us called pit bulls personally or by reputation? Oh, personally, absolutely. If there's a news story about pit bulls, I personally watch it. Would you like a cookie, dear? <laughs> no, thank you. Maybe later. Number two. Okay. Oh, oh, personally, I, my second cousin in Kansas had a pit bull when she was growing up. I, I met him twice. The dog, not the cousin. <laughs> Number one. Neither. I've done extensive research on the development of the bull canine groups. As I read about the group uh, known as the American Pit Bull Terrier, my interest was piqued, and I want to learn more, which I've done. Thank you. Number three, why do you think you want a pit bull type canine? Oh, I know pit bulls are loyal. They're strong as they look, and male or female are darn handsome. I want you to ride in my red convertible, and I've got goggles and, and a scarf for you to wear when we do that. You'll be such an eye catcher. I'm, I'm hoping that with you there, we, we can catch husband number six. <laughs> Would you like a cookie, dear? Oh, no, thank you. Maybe later. Number two, same question. My, my second cousin was a nuisance, so I know pits have to have a lot of patience. Um, I know they're strong and sturdy, so why do I want one? Well, my kids have been bugging me for two things, a dog and a Shetland pony. I think this would be a great deal all around. The kids can get a dog strong enough to ride like a horse. Plus, our neighborhood is kind of sketchy. I worry about Wanda. That's my race car. <laughs> I've, I've heard pit bulls can be a ferocious guard dog. So, you know, I was thinking that maybe, Emma, you could, um, you could keep Wanda safe for me. Hmm. And number one? <sighs> I don't wish to offend you, Mrs. Kane, but I really do have to correct your appalling ignorance. You will not find any kind of breed of any kind of dog acceptable for riding like a horse. Also, pit bulls were not bred to be man biters, so if you want a guard dog, you should really choose something else. In general, pit bulls are just people loving a people loving breed. Some almost have the burglar the burglar carry out the goods. I want to simply have you because I want to give you a good life, you know, good food, a warm bed, and plenty of exercise. And if you think you'll enjoy it, agility training so we can compete together. But best of all, we'd be best friends for life. Whoops! Did you hear that? That signals that our time is up. Now, Emma, I know this is a hard decision to make because this is a lifetime decision, but it's time to choose. Have you made your choice? Yes, Jean, I'm going to go with number one. Emma, it's my pleasure to introduce you to your new best friend, Radcliffe Potter. Cliff, come on over. Say hello to your new best friend. Look at that. I think this is a match made in pet connection land. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Pet Connection. We'll see you next time. Hey, Cliff, come on, let's blow everybody a big kiss. Thanks for being here. Hi, welcome to Multnomah County Animal Services. My name is Ann Potter and I'm here to give you a glimpse of what goes on inside the doors of the animal shelter every day. So if you'd like to join me, we'll take you on a little tour. Come on inside. Just inside the doors is Client Services, your first stop for any pet or license related questions. Every day, our client services staff helps you figure out how to help pets. I'd like you to introduce you to one of those staff members now. Her name is Shannon James, and she's going to tell us a little bit about licensing and why it's important. Hi, Ann. So having your pet currently licensed is important if an animal were to be found out in the street wearing its ID tag, it would be quickly reunited to the owner. Your licensing fee is also what directly goes to keeping our shelter open to take in all the stray, sick, injured animals for Multnomah County. 
Right now, we achieved the goal of having 100,000 active licenses for Multnomah County. 100,000 new licenses this year. That's 100,000 pets that, if they're lost on the streets of Multnomah County, can be reunited quickly and easily with their owners. And that's 100,000 license fees that go directly to supporting community pets. Thank you for that. Multnomah County Animal Services is also responsible for all stray dogs and cats in Multnomah County. So if you've lost a pet, you should come to the shelter and look for that lost dog or cat, whether you live in the city of Portland or right here in Gresham and Troutdale. You can also go online and look at our lost and found videos at multcopets.org. But really, you need to come visit. If you come to our facility for a tour, you may be surprised to find that we have the highest standards of animal care possible in the United States. We're AHA accredited, and every dog and cat that can be touched that comes into this shelter receives a health exam complete with flea treatment, deworming, vaccinations, and checks for major health issues. So the animals in our care receive the very best care possible. The dogs coming into the shelter have all been previously owned by humans. I can say that because there are no packs of wild dogs roaming around Multnomah County. The same is not true for cats, however. There are feral cat populations that live in the county who have never seen the inside of a home. These cats are called feral cats. And we have a special room here at the shelter where we really try to determine whether or not a cat who's come in a trap is truly feral or some neighbor's trapped cat. If it is truly feral, we have started a new program at the shelter where we're trying to figure out how to do trap, neuter, return, which is the cat comes in, we spay or neuter it, and we return it to where it came from as a way of keeping feral populations down and providing a safe, humane way for that cat to live out its life. It's really important to remember that our stray pets are generally your lost pets. In the case of dogs, 40 to 45 percent of owners will come and pick up their dogs. Unfortunately for cats, the numbers aren't as good. Only 2 to 3 percent of, the, of their owners will come and pick them up. The animals that are, are not picked up by their owners go through a behavior assessment and then wind up here in the shelter on our adoption floor. The kennels for the dogs or the cattery if you're a cat. Once they're on the, in the cattery or on the adoption floors, they're available for adoption. So if you haven't lost a pet, but you're looking for a new one, that's another good reason to come out to Troutdale and visit Multnomah County Animal Services. Sam will be here waiting for you. Welcome to Multnomah County Animal Services Muse Hour. I'm Kitty Latour. And I'm Kat Barkley, in for Ruff Barker, who is making his theatrical debut. Break a leg, Ruff. Well, with election season wrapping up, our top story tonight involves a campaign that we can all get behind. I want you to adopt me. That's the tagline for Multnomah County Animal Services new ad campaign to promote adoptable cats. Did you know that only about 2 to 3 percent of stray cats at the county shelter are ever reunited with their owners? Compare that to 45 percent of dogs who are reunited. Besides being very sad, this means shelter space for cats can fill up quickly, especially during certain times of the year, like spring kitten season. Shelter officials are challenged with how to increase space for all of the healthy, adoptable, unclaimed cats in a building that cannot be expanded. An additional challenge is convincing people in Portland that our Troutdale shelter is really not that far from Portland. And the shelter is full of quality, sweet, adoptable cats. The solution? If the people won't come to the cats, then Multnomah County Animal Services will bring the cats to the people. 
As part of the new ad campaign, Animal Services announced its new Neighbourhood Cat Adoption Partner Program. The county's partnering with locally owned Portland pet supply stores that will care for a handful of cats in each of their shops. Potential adopters can visit these businesses and meet the adoptable cats. The partner pet shop sets their own pricing and adoption protocols. Each adoption includes licensing, which will help reunite the cat and new owner if they ever get lost. Currently, six pet supply shops in Portland have shelter cats available for adoption. Personal Beast on Southeast Stark, Selwood Dog Supply and Cat Annex on Southeast 17th, Natural Pet Food Solutions on Southeast Milwaukee, Pets on Broadway on Northeast Broadway, Beauty for the Beast on North Lombard, and Meow House on Northeast Sandy Boulevard. These partners are providing a valuable service by expanding the county's ability to reach pet lovers in Portland that might not otherwise have adopted from the county animal shelter. The Portland locations give the cats more exposure to potential adopters at more convenient locations and times. And by housing the cats in their shops, these businesses free up space at the county shelter for the constant stream of lost and surrendered cats. If you're looking to bring a cat into your home, Multnomah County Animal Services encourages you to visit our partners. Of course, the county shelter in Troutdale remains a hub of feline activity if you do not find just what you're looking for in Portland. For more information about the felines available for adoption, visit any of the Portland Neighborhood Cat Adoption Partners or check out the county's website at www.multcopets.org. Well, Kitty, felines continue to make them muse. Our next story started out a tragic one, but thanks to the staff and volunteers at Multnomah County Animal Services, the ending is a victory for everyone involved, and we can be proud of it. You no doubt remember the story that was a talk of the summer when a Gresham police officer found a bucket taped shut with five kittens trapped inside. Four of the kittens had died, but one lone one was still alive. He was rushed to Dove Lewis Animal Hospital, where he received emergency medical care. Flea ridden and covered in excrement, the kitten had a severe case of upper respiratory infection. When he was stable enough, he was transported to Multnomah County Animal Services where he received additional medical care and found a foster home to help him recuperate from his ordeal before being offered for adoption. Animal Services staff member Shelley Laird volunteered to foster the kitten in her home because the county's volunteer foster families were completely maxed out taking care of other cats and dogs. The little guy soon became known as Charlie Bucket, after the main character in the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie. And like his namesake, Charlie Bucket soon grew curious about the, and bewildered by all the world around him had to offer. His recuperation took a while. He was stubborn about gaining weight at first, but once his infection was under control, the ounces started to add up, and finally he was ready for adoption. Charlie Bucket hit the adoption floor on Wednesday, October 10th and found his forever home the following week when the new adoptive family saw the news story about Charlie's ordeal and availability. Charlie reminded them so much of their cat that had passed away that they just knew it was meant to be. He is thrilled to have a family including a teenager and dogs to play with. Seems Charlie grew quite fond of dogs in his foster home. He liked to lie in wait under the throw rugs and pounce on them when they least expected it. Looks like he'll get to continue this game in his new forever home. Kitty, what a heartwarming story. Charlie's success story owes a lot to the foster care that allowed him to recuperate in a stress-free environment. Does the idea of volunteering in the comfort of your own home sound like a dream come true? Well, fostering is a much needed volunteer service where an animal comes into your home so you can help socialize them and get them ready for their forever home. Sometimes the animals are recovering from a medical procedure. Sometimes they're just too stressed out in a shelter environment and need a break. Multnomah County Animal Services is always in need of community members to step up and provide temporary shelter and love for animals getting ready for adoption. To help with this much needed service and make a difference in an animal's life, please visit our website at www.multcopets.org. Animals like Charlie benefit when people are willing to share their hearts and homes, if even for a short time. Thanks. Well, my awesome Christmas sweater says that it's about to get cold. Let's go to the map. In the Grand, you can expect light snow this week. 
While down south in Burns, it should be dry, but with temps into the teens. And up in the Portland area and around the gorge, we'll see plenty of rain into the new year. Our very social animals, Pitties in Pink, were back at it, hitting the streets with all the swells in the pearl. On October 28th, Turfenkian Carpets showroom opened their doors to celebrate National Pitbull Awareness Month with a lavish party complete with brunch, a photo booth, and an opportunity for some adoptable dogs to strut their stuff and possibly land a permanent home. Several groups that are bully on pit bulls were on hand to share information about these great dogs and the public. Multnomah County Animal Services, Born Again Pit Bull Rescue, Family Dogs New Life Shelter, Fences for Fido, Respect a Bull's Dog Walks, Panda Paws, and the Neighborhood Pet Project. At least one Animal Services Pity and Pink alumni, Sadie, attended the soiree. All this pink may leave you wondering, just who are these pities in pink? It all started in 2011 when shelter volunteers dressed 13 adoptable pit bulls in fun, frilly, frolicky tutus and flower lays and pink harnesses and leashes and marched in the annual Troutdale Parade. It was a fun outing for these lucky 13 and a great introduction to the community of the fantastic bully dogs available at Multnomah County Animal Shelter. Pitties and Pink have participated in other parades, rain or shine, showcasing adoptable shelter dogs. Although the cast of Pity characters may change from parade to parade, the shelter's mission of finding each of these dogs a loving, forever home remains the same. If you are looking to add a bully breed to your family, consider Multnomah County Animal Services the next time you're ready to bring home a dog. Well, folks, that wraps up this episode of Multnomah County Animal Services Muse. I'm Kitty Latour. And I'm Kat Barkley. Until next time, stay, stay altered, altered, Portland. Portland. Hi, I'm Stephanie with Multnomah County Animal Services and this is my buddy Howie. If this is your first time tuning into this segment, we're going to talk a lot about clicker training and using the clicker or marker as a tool. The clicker is a great little box, makes a sound. They have some for sensitive dogs that, are, that click a little quieter um, and in some cases you can also use a ballpoint pin. It just makes a clicky sound. The reason that we use a clicker or a marker is when you have a fast moving dog who's throwing lots of behaviors your way, you want to be able to find a way to isolate that that thing that they just did is the one you want to reward and the one that you want to see again. So I like using a clicker for big, fast moving dogs because it's a great tool um, to give them immediate feedback. We can click faster than we can talk. Um, as far as markers go, I also do like using a verbal marker like yes because you can say it with a smile. Um, it's also something that you can um, just kind of, you don't have to worry if you have your clicker with you. You can mark a behavior with yes without having to have the tool in your hand. But for Howie, we're going to use the clicker. Um, if you've been watching some of the other segments, you've been seeing Howie doing a lot of jumping up on me. So I want to show you how to use the clicker um, to communicate with the dog without having to actually touch him or speak to him. Um, one of the things that's happening with Howie is he's really motivated. He's easily frustrated. So when you have that combination with a dog that's really motivated, he really wants what I have, and he's really easily frustrated and jumping up and uh, has been something that has usually got him what he wanted in the past just by because he got rewarded for it, then I want to be able to uh, point out to him that sitting is going to be a lot better way to do that. So what you're not going to hear me doing a lot of talking over this point, I'm just going to be interacting with Howie and trying to isolate all the behaviors that I want to see. So I might be training him to do several different things at once. I'm not really sure. It just kind of depends on what he throws my way. But 
the point is, is when I have a dog like Howie, I'm not going to be using the leash for feedback. I'm not going to be using my voice for feedback. I'm just going to be marking and rewarding the stuff that I like. Um, and it's a good exercise in, in that it doesn't take a lot of energy on your part. You can just stand there and click and reward for the stuff that you want to see again. And it's a really great way to take a young, distracted dog and have them zero in their focus on you and all this other stuff is going on around them. Because you're going to be giving lots of feedback in a, in a very short period of time. So here we go. So I clicked for four on the floor in that case. Um, he did jump up a little bit, but what I wanted to make sure that I marked was the fact that it was four on the floor in that, in that moment. Um, dogs, are, dogs make the connection with things that happen directly before or after something. So if I had um, clicked or said yes when his feet were actually on me and then gave him a reward, he might actually believe that, oh, got it, it's feet on you is the thing that gets the reward, great. So that's why I wanted to make sure that I pause so that his feet were firmly on the ground before I clicked and rewarded. Um, and that's an important thing because oftentimes you'll hear people say, why did you feed that dog when he just jumped on you? Because he wasn't jumping on me when I marked and rewarded the behavior. He looked at me. I'm going to jackpot that. Jackpot means that I've been giving him little pieces of treats up to this point, just one after the other. And jackpot means I'm going to tell him that was really awesome because he turned and looked at me. And in a moment when he normally would have had to make a decision to pummel me <laughs> or sit, he chose to sit. And that's what I really wanted to capture with a big like Yahoo moment. And that's why I'm going to give him a jackpot. Well, that's our show for tonight. We hope you've enjoyed our special guests, both furry and human, and we hope to see you again next time. And remember, if you're looking to add a new special pet to your life, make sure to stop by Multnomah County Animal Services in Troutdale. I'm your host, Kat Barkley, saying goodbye for now. <laughs>